Should we do a book haul? Yeah. Let's do a book haul. Hey, welcome back booktube. Uh, I thought I'd go ahead and do a book haul for you today. Uh, it's been a kind of confusing day. It started out drizzling. Now the sun's coming up, but it's dark clouds. I don't know what's going on out there, so I thought I'd stay in here and show you some of the books I got recently. The first two are part of a manga series I've been reading. I've already read these two, and I'll talk more about them uh, in my upcoming update. This is Girl from the Other Side by Nagabi, Volume 5 and Volume 6. Um, kind of a dark but also tender manga series. Um, the illustrations are okay within it. Um, let's see, I'm not giving away anything. Um, kind of stark, not a lot of background, um, and but it's still kind of an intriguing series. Um, but yeah, I finished those two. Next up are some books uh, that we got in at uh, work the other day. Uh, they look like they're brand new, although these are all used books. Um, they're part of the uh, Wordsworth editions. I picked up a couple, but we got in quite a few. Uh, but these just kind of grabbed my attention right off the bat. Uh, first one is Tales of Unease by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. There are Tales of Mystery and Supernatural. Uh, this is the uh, contents listed within. And I'm a huge uh, Sherlock Holmes fan, but I also uh, wanted to read a few more of uh, of his other works. So I was happy to come across that. And anything kind of on the supernatural horror kind of realm I'm always into. The other one's also a horror novel. This is uh, by Robert W. Chambers. It's called The King in Yellow. <laughs> Hold that face. That's pretty cool. Um, I heard someone else mention this uh, on YouTube, um, but I don't remember who it was. Uh, this is apparently a collection of stories. Uh, it says horror, science fiction, romance, and lyrical prose. Uh, just a masterpiece of weird fiction. It's a series of vaguely connected stories linked by the presence of a monstrous and suppressed book which brings fright, madness, and spectral tragedy to all those who read it. So that sounded really interesting. Uh, okay, let's see table of contents for that. But they are all linked by some central theme. Uh, the next one is a Sherlock Holmes twist. <laughs> the best way to describe this. Uh, there's going to be several kind of Holmes-related books throughout this um, haul, so be prepared. This one is uh, very much on the humorous side. It's the second volume in a series. I, I know of at least three total. I don't know if there's more beyond that, but I read the first one earlier this year. Absolutely loved it. Uh, this is Warlock Holmes by G.S. Denning, and it's subtitled The Hellhound of the Baskervilles. I give this little kind of movie thing back here. Uh, it's described starring Warlock Holmes, accidental detective, Sir Henry Baskerville, winsome lumberjack, Mrs. Hudson, reader of French smut, and John Watson, befuddled. Um, in book one, it said John Watson, terrified, um, because he comes to learn that Holmes isn't quite human, and neither are some of the other people surrounding him, like Inspector Lestrade and another character who's sort of this ogre character, Lestrade's a vampire. Uh, a nihilistic vampire. Um, within these theories, though, I have to describe uh, Watson as the main detective. He is the one who has the level head, who kind of steers Holmes in the right direction. Um, these books are laugh out loud, literally laugh out loud, hilarious. Uh, but the last one ended on quite a cliffhanger, quite a twist, um, surrounding the character of Moriarty, and he'll pop up, him and his gang, within this story as well. And they're all a collection of stories, short stories, told by Watson that are loosely based on the actual canon stories by Doyle. Uh, so you can see like the Silver Blaze kind of mentioned there, but there's a, there's twists to it. They're not quite, you know, the little supernaturally twisted kind of stories. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to reading that one. Uh, the next one's a classic. Uh, I just came across the name, grabbed my attention, and then I looked more into it. This is uh, George... Du Maurier's Trilby. A thin little uh, classic. Quite a nice cover there. And I read the back, saw a name on there. I'm thinking, oh, that grabbed my attention. It says, in the demonic musician Svengali, George Du Maurier created one of liter literature's legendary villains. Now, I've heard of Svengali before. I've seen movies based on this character. Didn't know it was based on a book. So I'll go ahead and read the synopsis for you. It says, Trilby opens in the Latin Quarter of Paris, where Trilby O'Farrell is working as an artist's model. Her grace and ingenuous charm make a poignant contrast to the cruel magnetism of Svengali, under whose spell she falls. Using hypnotic powers, Svengali shapes her into a virtuoso singer, 
Europe's most captivating soprano, but her golden voice and even her life become fatally tied to him. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading that one. Uh, the next one is uh, by, I, I came across this one and thought, Adam at Momento Mori talks about this author all the time. And in fact, his channel is named from this book. This is Muriel Sparks' Memento Mori. This is quite a lovely edition. Looks like it hasn't even been read. Um, and if I read the first sentence, I'm thinking, oh, this sounds kind of spooky. And then I read that it's funny. I'm like, okay, uh, I'm just going to read this synopsis. It's really short here. It says, in late 1950s London, something uncanny besets a group of elderly friends. An insinuating voice on the telephone exhorts each, remember, you must die. That sounds perhaps scary, doesn't it? It says their geriatric feathers are soon thoroughly ruffled by these seemingly supernatural calls and the resulting flurry, many an old unsavory secret is dusted off. Addressing old age, the poignant and spooky memento mori is a wickedly hilarious delight from the mistress of the highest high comedy. So I have not read anything of hers uh, yet. I do own Territorial Rights, which I found, I think, at a library sale. But I hadn't come across her, so I don't really know much about this uh, writer's uh, style or anything, uh, or what she's best known for, other than um, being an inspiration for Adam at Momento Mori. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to checking that one out. Sounds interesting. Next up is one of those Holmes books I was talking about. This is The Final Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. It says it's written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and collected and introduced by Peter Haining. Uh, so this intrigued me. It, uh, I'll, I'll read the synopsis for you here. It just says, uh, for many years it's been widely accepted that the complete canon of Sherlock Holmes' adventures by Doyle consisted of 56 stories and four novels. That's all I'm aware of. It says, but there have been persistent rumors of a number of other items that Conan Doyle wrote, wrote about his world-famous detective, and which, for one reason or another, have never been included in the collected works. Now when you get a lot of this other kind of fiction, like this group right here collected by uh, Otto Penzler, you know, fan fiction, other short stories, they make it sound like, oh, these were lost works found, uh, written by, you know, Watson. But this actually has Doyle as the author listed. Okay. So that makes me kind of wonder, um, are these authentic? Uh, it says, now on the 50th anniversary of the death of Sir Arthur, these missing items, including stories, plays, and poems, have at last been unearthed from obscurity and are published together in this volume to provide the final remaining authentic accounts of the great sleuth. So, yeah, uh, there are stories about Holmes. There, um, I'm not there, sure there's actual mysteries here. Um, it's possible. And it says even um, poetry as well. So, yeah, I'll have to let you know once I get kind of delved into it um, what this is all about exactly, but I had to pick it up. Um, the next one was a cover by, uh, same as this author's previous book I bought, which I haven't yet got to. I, I kind of like to save these for, you know, in the fall, especially around October or so, um, but I do own one of her books already. Uh, this one, though, I kept seeing pop up on, on Goodreads. as like, she's more well known for this one. And these are self-published books too, but when I saw the cover and read the synopsis, I had to pick it up. This is uh, Craven Manor by Darcy Coates. And I think um, I even saw this on someone's channel before. Um, you can see there's no publisher information on there, so it does appear to be like a self-published book. But that just, nice creepy cover. And the, in and the inside sounds really good too here. It says, uh, Daniel is desperate for a job, but when someone slides a note under his door offering him the groundskeeper's position at an old estate, it seems too good to be true. Alarm bells start ringing when he arrives at Craven Manor. The mansion's front door hangs open and leaves and cobwebs litter the marble floor. Uh, it's clear no one has lived there in a long time, but an envelope waits for him inside the doorway. It contains money and promises more. Daniel is desperate. Against his better judgment, he moves into the groundskeeper's cottage behind the crypt. Uh, he's determined to ignore the strange occurrences that plague the estate. But when a candle flickers to life in the abandoned tower window, Daniel realizes Craven Manor is hiding a terrible secret, one that threatens to bury him with it. Well, he's near the crypt, so he doesn't have far to go. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that sounds that sounds really good. Uh, back to another Holmes book. This is The West End Horror, a posthumous memoir of John H. Watson, um, edited by Nicholas Meyer. And there's Nicholas Meyer. This came out, I think it was 1976. Uh, it says, uh, okay, 
March, 1895, London. A month of singular occurrences is in the West End. First, there was the bizarre murder of theater critic uh, Jonathan McCarthy. The police were baffled. Then came the lawsuit against the Marquess of Queensbury for libel. The public was scandalized. And one of the ingenue at the Savoy discovered with her throat slashed, or the police surgeon, who disappeared, taking with him two corpses from the mortuary. Some of the theater district's most fashionable and creative luminaries, as well as a number of more marginal participants, were involved or affected by these events. A penniless stage critic and writer named Bernard Shaw, Ellen Terry, the gifted actress, and the loveliest woman in London, Gilbert and Sullivan, a suspicious box office clerk named Bram Stoker, an aging matinee idol, Henry Irving, uh, an unscrupulous publisher calling himself Frank Harris, and a controversial wit by the name of Oscar Wilde. Scotland Yard is mystified by what appears to be unrelated cases, but to Holmes, the matter is elementary. A maniac is on the loose. So, yeah, sounds good. I love when they bring um, real-life characters into uh, stories. So we have Oscar Wilde within this one, and Bernard Shaw, and lots of you know, well-known names. So that sounds really good. Uh, another follow-up to that is another homeless kind of related story. Uh, this is The Revenant of Thraxton Hall by Vaughn Entwistle. It is a paranormal casebook of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, now, Doyle was very into supernatural, um, went to lots of seances and things, uh, so it kind of brings that element of his personality within the pages of this. Uh, I'm just going to read you the synopsis of it. Arthur Conan Doyle, having just killed off Sherlock Holmes in The Final Problem, has immediately become one of the most hated men in London. So when he is contracted by a medium of some renown and asked to investigate a murder, he jumps at the chance to get out of the city. There is one little twist, however. The murder hasn't actually happened yet. The medium, one Hope Thraxton, has foreseen her own death, which will apparently occur at the third seance of the meeting of the Society for Psychical, Psychical Research at her manor house in the English countryside. Along for the ride is Conan Doyle's good friend, Oscar Wilde, and never one to miss out on an adventure or a potentially good story. Together they travel to Thraxton Hall, a manor with a complicated and chilling history, currently filled with potential suspects, including a mysterious foreign count, a levitating magician, and an irritable old woman with a familiar. Meanwhile, Conan Doyle is enchanted by the plight of the capricious Hope Thraxton, who may or may not have a more complicated backstory than it at first appears. As Conan Doyle and Wilde participate in seances and consider the possible motives of the assembled group, the clock ticks ever closer to Hope's foretold murder. That sounds awesome. So, yeah, looking forward to that one. Next up is a new release uh, by an author who I absolutely adore. Uh, I've read her first two novels now, The Dead House and um, the, che the Trees Car and the Trees Crept In. That is part of the title. Uh, this is Dawn Kurtigich's Third novel, The Teeth in the Mist. Awesome cover, by the way. <laughs> but that's really neat. Her books are always filled with all sorts of uh, things. And uh, uh, visual, you can't really see it all through here, but um, ah, there you go. That's a good example. Uh, lots of uh, little treats within the, the pages. Um, yeah, yeah, that's creepy. And these, I believe, uh, were. Uh, chosen by herself with this, within this one. Um, but let me go ahead and read you the synopsis for you. Before the birth of time, a monk uncovers the devil's tongue and dares to speak it. The repercussions will be felt for generations. 16-year-old photography enthusiast Zoe has been fascinated by the haunted, burnt-out ruins of Medwin Mill House for as long as she can remember. So she and her best friend Poulton run away to explore them. But are they really alone in the house? And who will know if something goes wrong? In 1851, 17-year-old Roan arrives at the mill house as one of three wards, all with something to hide. When Roan learns that she is connected to an ancient secret, she must escape the house before she is trapped forever. In 1583, Hermione, a young new bride, accompanies her husband to the wilds of North Wales, where he plans to build the largest watermill and mansion in the area. But rumors of unholy rituals led to a tragic occurrence, and Hermione will need all her strength to defeat it. Three teenagers, centuries apart, drawn together by one unholy pact, a pact made by a man who, more than a thousand years later, may still be watching. This haunting and captivating mystery redefines the horror and fantasy space. I love her books. <laughs> they are so good. In fact, just yesterday I sold a copy of The Dead House that we'd gotten in shortly before 
uh, to a customer and I said, you're gonna love this. And if you do, check out her next book. And she's got a third book. I said, you gotta, you gotta read it. Um, I'm sure she'll enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend her, her works and I'm looking forward to reading her latest novel. Last book on this list is a kind of a big, huge picture book collection type thing, and it's Holmes related. This is Sherlock Holmes in America. Uh, I don't know who the author or editor. Okay, uh, no, Bill Blackbeard, a forward by uh, Dean Dickensheet, and Harry N. Abrams is the publisher. It is um, a collection of all sorts of kind of memorabilia, Holmes related illustrations, uh, magazine covers. Uh, newspaper articles, illustrations, uh, there's um, Collier's magazine covers, which look really cool. There are photos of the actors who played um, Holmes in various um, adaptations. There are comics. <laughs> there's just a little bit of everything in here for the Holmes fan, so I'm looking forward to kind of delving into this one. Um, so there's also there's like comics and stuff in here. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's just a little bit of everything. I, I just kind of stumbled across this while straightening out some books at work, and I'm like, oh yeah, sounds cool. So I'll make you a quick pyramid. Some Holmes-related stuff. Uh, horror by uh, Don Kurtigich. More Holmes. More horror. <laughs> more Holmes. A little humorous thriller. Uh, Svengali related, another humorous Holmes, a couple more horror books, and a little bit of Japanese manga thrown in for good measure. <laughs> so that is my book haul. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you've read any of these, let me know what you thought of them. Uh, no spoilers for these. And uh, if anything sounds interesting, what sounded interesting? <laughs> let me know down below. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.